Aloha and welcome to a Hanakako on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network. I am Joe Kent, Vice President of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, filling in for Dr. Kaylee Iakina, President of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, Hawaii's only free market think tank. And today we are thinking hard about agriculture. Governor Ige recently announced a goal to double food production in Hawaii by the year 2030. Can it be done? Should it be done? Is it even possible? Today we're going to talk with two local experts in a field called aquaponics. We're here with Jay Ogden of Sustainability Design Consultants and uh, aquaponics uh, expert, and also Chris Feetz. Uh, welcome, you two. Thank you. Pleased to be here. To the show. Yeah, thank you. So before we get into the whole uh, can we double agriculture? I'd like to learn a little bit more about what is aquaponics. Now, if I remember right, there's growing plants in water, there's growing animals in water, and then there's kind of combining the two. So can you explain that a little bit? Well, there's plants grown in water, fish grown in water, and we combine the two. <laughs> no, I said it right. <laughs> <laughs> Best. Yeah, okay. I'm good. You know, uh, Chris is really the expert here at okay. the table with regard to aquaponics. So maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about what you've learned about aquaponics in the last few years. Sure, thanks, Jay. Um, aquaponics is really just a combination of two things. Uh, aquaculture, which is the raising of a fish or marine species, and then hydroponics, which is the growing of uh, plants, uh, usually in a water solution. Now, why would you want to put them together? Uh, the it's really a synergy of two different systems. Uh, in aquaculture, you have a uh, setup where the fish produce a lot of uh, waste, and that has to be uh, managed or dealt with. And in hydroponics, you have a situation where you need the nutrients. And so by bringing those two together, you kind of you gain a lot of uh, a synergistic gain from the two. So the plants gain from the waste from the fish, and the fish gain from the waste from the plants, and sort of uh, an, a little ecosystem there, is yes. that right? the fish enjoy the clean water from the plants, yes. Oh, okay. And you um, use, or you, you produce these uh, aquaponic systems in your business, is that right? Yeah, we, we don't manufacture. Uh, at this, we did manufacture for several years uh, local local systems. We've gone to a manufactured product now uh, from two different companies on the mainland, mostly because the sustainability of our locally manufactured products was a very short time. Uh, we've used a lot of wood products, building them, and they just deteriorated over time. Mm -hmm. So our clients are coming back and saying, hey, you know, we'd like to continue growing food this way but our system is falling apart. <laughs> right. And so we're now providing a system that could last 10 or 20 years. And your customers are coming in, they want to grow gardens and uh, produce food in a different way. Mm -hmm. Why would somebody want to do that versus growing in the ground, do you think? Well, our clients who are primarily backyard gardeners uh, have gardens in their backyard already for okay. the most part. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they're going to not do that and continue to do that, because some plants really do better in the ground. Okay. You know, but um, the ease and the low maintenance that aquaponics offers is a real in incentive for a lot of people because we, we just, a lot of people have limited time to garden. Mm -hmm. They got kids, they got jobs, right. they got mortgages to pay. Oh, so it's a low maintenance. So it's say. a low maintenance thing. Uh, our company brings the system in. We set it up, ready to plant, and we actually uh, allow our employees, if a client wishes, to come in and do the planting, mm -hmm. do the harvesting, and put the food on their back porch. Wow. Okay. So. <laughs> so that all that's all included in in our arrangement with our clients. Right. And so the, the the client doesn't really have to get too involved if they don't want to. Now yeah. some do do want to get more involved. Now, and so, do, you, do you have to weed? Uh, I mean, is it the same as uh, a traditional garden? We have to weed it and kill the bugs and all this? Or well, do they have that, those kinds of problems? You, you do have some weeds, okay. but not anywhere near as much weeds as you do in the oh, ground. Oh, really? Yeah. Why is that? Because the weeds don't have a, really a place to get started. Okay, the only way weeds, re weeds can get into the garden in aquaponics is if a bird flies over and poops oh, a seed. Oh, okay. Or I see. Like, or the wind blows in or the wind blows the seed right. in or something like that. But there's also more flexibility in these aquaponic systems. You can move them if you need to. 
easy. Oh, yeah. you know, you, like it's hard to move a garden, but yeah. you can move one of these systems. Is that right? Well, many of our clients do not own the home they're in, so uh, a typical lease turns over in two or three years. People like the ability to just pick it up, put it on the moving truck, and take it to their next place. Right. If you take your garden with you, yeah. and you can also do it indoors if you want to. Some clients are doing that. Oh, okay. But they don't. They don't have space. Uh, around the house, they have a garage, and mm -hmm. they're not parking their car in it. Now, Chris, what does that entail? If you, if I wanted to grow indoors, um, you know, a hydroponic system, what would that entail? Well, with an aquaponic system, uh, you have a lot of uh, advantages inside, especially uh, with an a individual or a smaller system. You can put it uh, on a windowsill if you have a sunny side, a south-facing window. Uh, if you do not, if you're in uh, like a high rise or whatnot, you can have a small system and then just use fluorescent lights, uh, or even now you can use LED lights. Okay, so it's just basically about if you can get enough light. Yes, in the system. it's all light dependent. The fish require shade, and the plants require. And you don't light. have to feed the fish. You do have to feed the fish. Oh, okay. So just like an aquarium, uh -huh, uh, yeah. with a smaller system or a backyard system, uh, you are feeding the fish every day. Uh, and there is some maintenance. It's not zero maintenance. Right. Uh, zero maintenance is going to the store and buying your produce. But if you, uh, yeah. if you <laughs> are in it for the yeah, high quality right. produce yeah. uh, or having direct access when you, uh, when you want it, then that's, mm -hmm. that's when you go garden your backyard. Now, aquaponics is um, big in Hawaii in a way. I read a, a study recently that showed that um, aquaponics has now surpassed um, cattle for pro being productive in Hawaii. And um, what... What um, examples uh, locally here do we see in aquaponics? Um, Chris, Chris has actually worked at a couple of the uh, larger um, commercial aquaponic farms here, one on the, the Waianae Coast. And it's a two-acre farm right now. Two-acre farm. And that's, that's about um, 50, 100-foot-long aquaponic tables, 50 of them. Wow. And it produces a lot of food for our major uh, food chains. Here. What kinds of things are they growing? Uh, they're growing uh, like manoa lettuce, green onions, um, and some other, depending on the season, uh, bok choy, bok choy, mm. ung choy, um, and di different herbs. Okay, so if we talk about um, this food goal that um, David Ike put forth of doubling our mm. food supply, I think the, the stat is like 10% of our food in Hawaii that we consume is grown locally. Mm -hmm. If we wanted to double that, um, do you think aquaponics or aquaculture has a, a chance to help with that? I think it's a, a substantial uh, way. Uh, Chris probably knows better than I, but um, the commercial people who are growing aquaponically, um, the only challenge they have is being able to afford the infrastructure to put the system in place. And the um, cost to manufacture these is coming down as it is just like cell phones and everything. So I think in the next 10 years, it's very, very possible to double the commercial uh, production of food here. Okay, and uh, your opinion of that? Uh, I, would, I would agree it, it would play a part. Um, I think all types of agriculture have a role in this. Mm -hmm. um, some other folks like uh, Urban Farm Hawaii with Hunter Haviland has uh, very good plans on uh, uh, using uh, public land and uh, private backyards mm -hmm. uh, where we can get zoning to utilize those areas. And then the areas where they're not suitable for uh, in-ground agriculture, I think that's the perfect place to use something like aquaponics. Mm -hmm. uh, this really strikes me because a agriculture in Hawaii, a lot of people say, well, we just need more land. But I wonder if in the future, um, growing food could become so efficient that you could actually use less land and grow more food. Now, does aquaponics actually present a pathway towards that? It does, uh, Joe, because uh, places like um, Dubai um, and uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other places around that are doing this, but high-rise buildings are now being built as farms. No, really? Yeah. Dubai has a 20-story building. Huh. It's a farm. And every, every level of this building is growing something different. And the buildings are controlled environment. So the heat, the coolness of the is, is, manu is uh, maintained. Uh, moisture levels are maintained. 
Uh, light is maintained by either the sun and reflective mirrors or artificial lighting like we have here in this studio. So you can grow 24 seven. Wow, interesting. Yeah, and, and the plants respond very well to that. That's interesting because, see, the normal narrative that you would hear is that in order for us to have more uh, farming, mm -hmm. we need to make it harder for people to build buildings, right? Yeah. But that's kind of the opposite of what you're saying. It's exactly is that, the opposite. And right. I think there's a point at which maybe 20 years from now, we really won't need to use our farmland to grow the food that we need to support the people here. That's interesting. And that means we have an opportunity, I think, to use farmland into forests, parkland, mm -hmm. uh, orchards, things that can't grow aquaponically. Now, uh, if you had the, let's say, now we're, t I don't know if we're talking about fan fantasy land yet, but this is happening in the world currently. It's happening in the world now. We're if you had a building that was doing some sort of uh, production of aquaponic um, agriculture, would you need, um, you know, more labor? To, to run this building, or would it all be run uh, by the push of a button? <laughs> Why don't you talk about what you're yeah. doing? <laughs> well, there are uh, some examples of robotic harvesting in uh, Japan. has some, some examples where the entire factory is uh, automated. They have automated planting, automated harvesting, and then they have um, individuals going around to do quality checks. Um, the, in that, in that, uh, on that island, in that, in that country, it's, uh, it's, the, the cost is worth it. Um, where we have access to um, cheap imports still and will continue, uh, it may not make as much sense to do that sort of thing, the total automation. So I, I believe there will always be a labor component, um, at least for the f foreseeable future uh, on Hawaii. Right. But that, that's not to say that there's not opportunities for automation in the existing systems. Right. What, what are the biggest barriers right now to, aqu to more people doing aquaculture in Hawaii, would you say? Well, on a commercial basis, it's probably land. Uh, the only barrier for the backyard gardener is what affordability uh, of the systems. And um, what I'm finding is that people generally start uh, a homemade system, have a little experience with it, find out that it's it's not it's not as easy as they thought it was. Maybe maybe they have a little failure involved in that, and they start looking for expertise. Sure. So when they start looking for expertise, then they find people like Chris and myself who have the ability to show them how to be successful with the garden they already have. Mm -hmm. And then when they're ready to upgrade to a, a bigger, more productive system, we're there to help them with that. Right. Well, when, uh, when the going get gets tough, the tough get going, I guess. <laughs> you have to exactly. teach them that lesson. Um, yeah. And we're going to try to teach the state that lesson when it comes to aquaponics. We're here with Jay Ogden and Chris Feets, and uh, we're talking about the future of agriculture. Don't go away. For a very healthy summer, watch Viva Hawaii. We're giving you the best tips and with our best health coach here. So, Viva Health Coach. Viva la comida saludable. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in to us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thanks. Welcome back to the show. This is A Hanukkah Ko. I'm Joe Kent and uh, today we're talking about agriculture and specifically aquaponics. But before we do, I want to say a big thank you to Jay and his crew at the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network. Um, it's so great to have uh, this help um, to help get big ideas out in the public. And uh, again, today we're talking about big ideas with Jay Ogden and Chris Feets of uh, sustainability, sustainability Design Consultants. They're aquaponics experts. Um, so thanks again for coming on the show. It's our pleasure. And we left off talking about some, some of the barriers and hurdles to um, 
getting this program adopted. So if aquaponics is so good, if it's um, such a great thing to do, why aren't more people doing it? Well, I think for the backyard gardener, it's cost. Um, people who are doing some gardening now in their own home, the, the, the um, only cost is the seeds, their labor to get in the ground and turn it up and do that. When they look at an aquaponic system, especially our type of systems, which are a little bit larger, the idea of putting two or $3,000 into a, a system is foreign. Mm -hmm. It's like going out and buying a car. And most people who um, haven't bought a new car in a few years are sticker shocked, mm -hmm. right? So when they come into our place and they see, oh, well, our small system is $3,500, you know, that's kind of a barrier. So what we've done is we've, we've gone beyond that. We've said, okay, if, if, if that's a barrier, then we'll, make, we'll take that barrier away by allowing you to lease our system. And so for a couple hundred dollars per month, they can get into a system and, and a service to help them get started. Okay. And so we think that's a way of... of lowering, lowering the barrier to entry. Lowering the barrier to entry. Right, right. And that allows us to then, if they move or they, they just don't want to do it anymore, we go pick up the system and put it, and put it in somebody else's yard. Right. Um, the objectives that our company has yeah, really... Yeah, why don't you tell me about, I know you were talking about it's, um, some it's of the amazing. objectives. It's amazing. I did a demographic study from our our last census and I found out there are 300,000 homes on Oahu. Now some of those are condominiums, a lot of them are. But the single family homes and the condominiums here that can uh, accommodate aquaponic systems, there's probably about 100,000 home sites on Oahu. Taking 10% uh, of that as people who are already gardening in their backyards, that's our market. So we're talking about 10,000 people who could possibly buy a backyard uh, aquaponic system. Sure. Last year we did about 20 systems, about one a month, one and a half a month sure. last year. It will take us a long time to do 10,000 systems. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> so there's a huge marketplace out there. So you for don't those. want just more business for yourself, but you want, actually you want more competition. I want more competition. I want to help the competition get started. I mean, and I'm a supplier to the competitors of my business. So that's fine. Why, why would a businessman want more competition? The market is so huge, and I don't think we have a whole lot of time left before we're going to need. Yeah, to but have, I mean, what I'm talking about is it, yeah. I was talking to Chris before, and you were saying that you uh, you're on the board. You're not really part of the company, but you're helping out. And is this passionate? Or are you guys passionate about this in some way, or? Mm. Yes, I, I'm passionate. And the reason is because uh, about 15 years ago, a doctor told me that if I don't change my habits, I'm going to be on his operating table. And it wasn't a friendly conversation. And so I said, OK, doc, what do I need to do? He said, well, you need to clean up your, your food act. <laughs> and so I changed my diet. I got more exercise. I lost about 40 pounds. And now I realize that if I stay on a good diet of, of well-grown food, organically, hopefully, then my body will respond well to that. Mm -hmm. I'm 70 years old today. I, I want to live another 50 or 60 years, if I can. Sure. And in order to do that, you laugh at me. But if I, if I can, I know I'm going to have to have a good diet. But it's not, not just about you. It's about society, too, isn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, but, but, you know, my average client age was 60 years old the last three or four years. So people my age are, are thinking about how do, I in, how do I endure? How do I keep my life going? What do I need to do to be more healthy and more active? And so aquaponics is a way for the backyard gardener to include a better diet, mm -hmm. a little exercise, and a way to be sustainable himself. And Chris, why did you get involved with this movement, would you say? Would you, I don't know if you call it a movement, but... <laughs> well, it is a movement, and okay. it's really it's about uh, controlling uh, what you eat and your lifestyle. Um, and this started for me when uh, I was in the military. I'm retired now. And uh, when I got to Hawaii, I thought I was in paradise because, look, you can grow year-round here. Right. And I originally grew up in uh, Wisconsin, where it was seasonal. And uh, to come here, and then I was living on base at the time, uh, we couldn't have gardens. 
anything that we did had to be able to be moved. And so when I started learning a little bit more about aquaponics and that it's portable, everything started to click and make sense. And it was just a matter of finding a system that would move with me as I, as I moved on. Oh, okay. Now, you were talking before, this, the word system sometimes scares people because mm. they don't want a system, they just want a simple, uh, a simple way to grow food. Is aquaponics, I mean, do you folks make it simple? I mean, let's say mm. I wanted to start um, doing, making an aquaponic farm. Um, what, what would that entail? Well, the equipment uh, necessary to build it, probably a small system that would fit on the tabletop here, might cost you two or three hundred dollars. You need, you need some grow beds, you need some rock. Really, you that's pump, it? You need so, a water tank. Uh -huh. So all of that together for a small system like that might run you two or three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So even so, I could even do it on a real small scale, oh, like a yes. micro scale oh, in yeah. a way. I've, I've provided systems to the uh, Department of Education. I've got about five or six schools on Oahu that have our systems in them. And in some of the elementary schools, we put a system on a table that's half the size of this table. <laughs> wow. So, you know, and, and, and the kids have... get an experience of, of what it's like to grow food. And, and does know, it have fish in it, too? Or fish like, in it. Really? Yeah. Now, for the fish, can you eat the fish, too? Or is that oh, just yeah. part of the system? Oh, really? Oh, the tilapia are really good eating fish. Wow. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So let's talk a bit about some of the vision that you have for your, for your organization and for this movement. What would, you, what would be an ideal sort of vision for Hawaii when it comes to aquaponics? Well, I don't know if the commercial uh, agriculture is ready for this, but my vision of it is that a third of the food that this population eats right now could be produced in the backyard of our, of our people's homes, a third. That means a third less of your budget goes into the stores and into the high cost, low nutrient food that's served from, from all of our stores. Right. You know, the shipping people are not going to be happy about that idea. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the food stores may not be happy about it. Sure. But as I see it, there's a transition going on. Mm -hmm. And over the next 10 or 15 years, I think as many as a third of the people living in a home or a, or a condo that can accommodate an aquaponic system. And by the way, we've been working with a lot of the AOAO groups here, the condominium associations. Oh, okay. And uh, oftentimes there's, an, uh, there's initially a, a negative response from the condo association because they don't understand what an aquaponic system involves. Mm -hmm. We meet with them, we explain it, we talk about the amount of weight because if it's on the second level of a, a condo, there's a concern about, well, is the floor capable of handling the extra weight of the water and the rocks and all that? Sure, sure. Once we discuss, discuss all those issues, uh, they're generally favorable to doing this. Interesting. So and, we've, and the costs are generally, I suppose, well, does it use lots and lots of water? I mean, it's called aquaponics. Actually, the water use is very minimal. In fact, it takes, what, 70 or 80 percent less water in an aquaponic system than it does in an in-ground garden. Oh, really? Why yeah. is that? Because the water is circulated. Aha. The only loss is due to evaporation. Oh, so okay. So you only lose 5% or so per day to evaporation. Oh, okay. So it's just like a fishbowl. You fill it up sometimes. That's so exactly. yeah. <laughs> That's right. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And, and I guess some electricity to run the pump, too, then. Yes. Why don't you talk about that, because yeah. that's a fear that a lot of people have. Yeah. How many watts does it take to run right. a pump? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, depending on the size of the system, there are different uh, ways to design a system where you could use very, very little energy, where you could run it off a very small solar panel during the day, and then you wouldn't need the power at night. There are other ways, depending on how big you get, that you could use a lot more. Okay. Uh, just a lot of it depends on the design and then really the demands of the system. Uh, the more fish, the more aeration you would need. The more plants, the more aeration you would need. Oh, okay. Out of the 50 systems that we've built to date, um, none of them have uh, photovoltaic capability. Um, because photovoltaic, the, you're talking about um, uh, solar panels. Solar panel, yeah, and, to run the pump. And right, things. okay. But in the, in the larger systems that we're offering now, um, the photovoltaic is going to become more important mm. because the pump needs to work 24-7. Right. And so, and the pump generally is bigger. Mm -hmm. And so there's also a, a water pump and an air pump that goes into the larger systems to aerate the water because the fish consume the oxygen out of the water. You have right. to bubble the water to get more oxygen in the water. Yeah. 
So those, both of those pumps are working 24-7. What would you say to someone who is thinking about it, has heard of it, um, is wondering about it, but just doesn't want to make the, the next the splash, I guess you could say? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that, you know, a, a lot of people are do-it-yourself kind of people, and they, they call me and I give them advice of how to get started, you know. Uh, I want people to call me and talk about what they want, because even though our system, they may not be ready for our system yet, um, I want to guide them towards getting ready for uh, a larger capability. Okay. And so with a couple, two or three hundred dollars, you can start with a small system. Mm -hmm. I can show, show them how to put it together. They can go to the stores and pick up the parts, do it at home. And, and then when they come back the next time, they've got some experience to operate. Right. From. And when we talk about bigger systems, um, how much, I mean, people sometimes on, in Hawaii are concerned with what if the ships don't come or like how, how much food, local food are we consuming? How big of an area or how big of an aquaponics system would you need to feed a person, do you think? You wanna answer that? Oh, go ahead, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, here's my experience. I, I, I have two in my family and uh, we live uh, on a eight and a half acre farm, so we, but we don't grow anything in the ground. Everything is grown in our aquaponics system. And our system is about 20 square feet. So that's about a, that's like a 10 by 20 space. Oh, okay. And there's plenty of food for us to share with our extended family. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. So it grows a lot of food so then. So it grows a lot you? of food. And it's really grown intensively. In other words, a grow bed that might be the same size as this table can grow 10 or 20 plants mm -hmm. at a time and they don't all mature at the same time. So you're constantly picking leaves off of this and using sure. that and so forth. And so that, that will continue to produce food for three to four months before right. it has to be replanted. Oh, interesting. So we, we show people how to, how to do this uh, intensive gardening in a small space. Well, thanks so much for coming here and showing us how to do it. I've learned a lot today and uh, hopefully we can get more people um, on board, so I guess uh, a lot of the barrier is just knowledge, and I, I guess it. that's it's what it. Think Tech Hawaii is about. In fact, that's what Ehana Kako, what we're about at the Grassroots Institute, is sharing the best knowledge to help Hawaii's government and Hawaii's society. So thanks so much for joining me. Um, I was here with uh, Jay Ogden and Chris Feets of uh, Sustainability Design Consultants. Our pleasure. And, uh, my name is Joe Kent, and I'm uh, Vice President at Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Hello.